Hey everyone, Soul Stinger is back with another tutorial about drawing faces in different angles. I will show you some workflows and techniques I've developed that um, make my life easier as an artist. I will show you how you can construct a face from ground up and also utilize 3D models to make your life easier. So be ready. Let's have a look at the first example where I'm starting out um, with uh, sketching a cube in perspective because this will establish my um, viewing angle, my camera angle for the head. And yeah, normally I wouldn't draw it like this detailed, but I want to showcase uh, what the procedure might be. An important part is to be able to draw these simple shapes like cubes and cylinders in perspective. And then I just round um, the edges a bit and place the anatomy there. So this is by no means uh, perfect, but it looks organic. It looks um, believable in some way. There could be some more perfection to it. But let's be honest, you could use 3D models and I will show you how to do this, but it's always good to stay independent and uh, being able to draw this just by yourself. I mean, it's really tempting to draw faces always from the same angle, like from the front view or from the profile view, but you really have to challenge yourself and bring things into perspective and study these kind of shapes it's really important because then you're you're gaining a lot more freedom and expressive um, options and also don't forget to sketch the body and always the head uh, together with the body otherwise you're just a specialist for um, portraits and stuff in this next example I want to showcase the importance of having a perspective grid and being able to place simple shapes in this perspective grid I'm using a curvilinear perspective here. The principles are almost the same, but the curvilinear perspective looks a bit more organic to me because it has five vanishing points. As a difference, as you can see here, this is like the standard type of linear perspective with three vanishing points. Now, for the curvilinear perspective, it's like having like many more um, vanishing points See, this could be a, like the standard type of perspective, linear perspective, with the three vanishing points. But if we curve the perspective lines, like in this example, you see we get a lot more uh, organic looking result. You can um, Google this thing, or there's a nice book, uh, How to Draw by Scott Robertson. It contains all the information you need, but the principle of placing simple shapes like cubes in perspective is the same and as you can see here it helps a lot in constructing the face from a from different angles down in the description you will find a link to a curve linear grid and you can use it as a starting point for something like this so the first thing i would recommend you is starting a sketchbook and drawing these basic shapes regularly whenever you have time. It's really low effort and you don't have to stress yourself out. Just keep going and you will see good results very soon, I promise you. The cool thing with this perspective grid is that you can easily draw in new shapes like I do here and these can be starting points for a figure or a head in this example and it makes your life so much easier because you get an idea of the uh, structure in 3d space first and now you see that i've rounded this cube because the forehead of the human skull is round that's where i start first it's always like the eyebrow area where i draw in these round shapes in this video i won't go into too much detail about the structure of the human head but I will show you some ways and resources that you can use to learn it and that you can use directly in Clip Studio Paint. In this time lapse you see that I've built upon the simple shapes 
a much more detailed structure and then it was really easy to fill in the line art and develop my characters and image. So I've searched for a um, head or skull model on Sketchfab that could help myself in creating these faces in different angles very easily. And I found it by the artist UAA. It's really cool because it has the essential landmarks that we need to build a face upon it. Basically, I'm using the same techniques that I showed you before. Now I'm not constructing the head from ground up, but using the 3D skull to build my character on top of it. So I brought in this model into Blender 3D and changed the proportions a bit. So I have a female and a male skull. Also I put this skull on top of a mannequin I've created some time ago. And it's you can change um, the shape, the basic shape. And you can also pose it like any other mannequin in Clip Studio Paint. Just drag the poses in and use the 3D functions. There are a lot of other tutorials that show you how you can do this. But basically what this does is it gives us yeah, a main structure to work with and it's really, to, um, it's really easy to set up and to use. Just head over to Clip Studio Assets and download your copy. Thanks again VUAA on Sketchfab for the head base model. And using the preset camera angles from the 3D menu, I was able to set up my camera angle really quickly. And that's how I ended up with this and started drawing in some landmarks like the main axis and main shapes. You see the jaw bones and or cheekbones. It's really important not to get stuck with this 3D model because yeah, you should just take this as an orientation um, in space. And as you can see, I'm trying to roughly get the shape down here that, I'm ca that I can work with. Now I've duplicated the 3D layer of the character and just change the angle. Again, if you're interested in learning how to place and pose characters, there are a lot of other tutorials. Search for character posing in Clip Studio Paint, for example, and you will find a lot. Here you can see that I'm, for demonstration purposes again, drawing in this cube shape that gives us here yeah, a main idea of the perspective and angle of the face. I think it's really important to understand how the face is um, yeah, placed and structured in 3D space. Let's have a look how we can um, yeah, simplify the existing character. Again, it's for demonstration purposes. If I would draw this for real, I think I would skip this step because yeah, it can be a bit distracting, but sometimes it's good to simplify the 3D model to be not distracted with it. So as you can see, I'm drawing in the neck and the purpose uh, why I left the neck um, f out from the 3D model is that the neck is very crucial and I've seen a lot of 3D models that that mess this area up so I decided to leave it um, leave it out um, then having some yeah um, bad version of a neck and it's also important to always um, yeah turn down the opacity of the 3D layer because it can get really distracting and the main thing is to stay in the flow and yeah keep drawing so again and i can't emphasize it enough the 3d models are really meant as a guideline 
to give you an idea of yeah, the structure of the head and how it's placed in 3D space. It's not meant to um, be traced like exactly because then your characters will look very stiff. And after that I proceeded as before and duplicated the character. It was really easy and yeah, I think this workflow works great um, for quickly developing different artistic ideas. For the end of this video, let's have a look at another workflow that works just with a skull and with a drawn sketch um, beneath it. You place your characters like you would do it always. And then I've created this single version of the skull, as I told you before. We can bring in 3D heads as a guideline just for the faces and for the heads. And as you can see, the process is um, very straightforward. You drag and drop the head models in, place them where you need them to be, scale them, rotate them a bit. And to make it easier for you, I put together a quick guideline on how to adjust your view and the rotation and location of your model. If you click outside of the model, you can rotate the view. Also right click and you zoom. With the mouse wheel, we adjust the field of view. And so your model or the viewing angle becomes more distorted. We have some uh, nifty icons and buttons here on the top of the model. So these here are meant to transform the model, like place it somewhere else or rotate it around its own axis, rotate it around the viewing axis. We can rotate it like it's standing on the floor and move it on the floor with this button here. The three buttons on the top left are the same as we did with the mouse buttons like rotating, zooming and moving. So uh, let's get back to our example. So to sum up the workflow, I had the sketch beforehand and then I brought in the 3D models to help me visualize the different angles of the head and its structure. I think it helped me a lot in speeding up my workflow and it's really um, not a shame to use this because you will learn a lot if you um, draw upon the structure of the head skull. So this concludes my video and tutorial about drawing faces from different angles. Please head over to Clip Studio Tips and like my tip there. I have some additional infos there. Also check out the other links in the description. I'm sure you will like the materials I've put together for you. Yeah, I wish you a good time, happy drawing, hope you stay well and healthy. See you next time, Soul Stinger out.